stocking rate is one of the most important decisions that you make on a ranch because it affects both the land health and it affects the animal production and health. Um, so it is a pretty important decision and I'm going to show you some of the basic steps that I use in calculating stocking rate. This is Karen Launchbaugh on Rangeland Ecology and Management at the University of Idaho. And I just want to warn you that this method that I'm going to describe is really just a ballpark figure that gets you started. Um, you need to continue to monitor and check to see if your stocking rate is accomplishing what you want um, and reset it over time. The method that I'm going to describe has basically four steps to it. First, I calculate the amount of usable forage that is on the land. And then I look at the ranch and I try to see if some parts of that forage are not accessible to livestock, perhaps because of rough terrain or distance from water or even fence configuration or other things. So I have to make some adjustments for accessibility. Then the next big step is to calculate the forage demand. How much are the animals going to eat in the grazing season? And then finally, I just calculate a stocking rate. And a stocking rate is how many animals per an area of land per year or per season. This is a pretty rough method, and again, it just gives you a ballpark figure. Generally, we would set a stocking rate and then follow up with monitoring over years and see if the stocking rate is working or not to accomplish our goals. Um, but you got to start somewhere, so you might use a, a calculated method like this if there is no previous stocking information or if you need to estimate the carrying capacity for like a land appraisal or some sort of biological survey. Or you might even use this sort of method if you were just trying to calculate um, changes in the kind or class of animal. So I'm going to give you an example here that I call Molly Texan. Molly bought a ranch in uh, the panhandle of Texas, that's in the southern mixed plains. It's a thousand acres. 75% of it is covered with a sandy loam range site that has 1,500 pounds per acre and 25% is um, covered by a range site called Upland uh, Shallow Site that produces 800 pounds per acre. So with this information, how much total forage does Molly um, have on her ranch? How much total forage is produced on her ranch? So I'm going to give you a second to calculate this. Okay, calculated in pounds per acre, then here are my calculations. 75% of it uh, would be 750 acres. Those 750 acres produce 1,500 pounds per acre, so that's 1,125 pounds of forage. The shallow site is 250 acres. It produces 800 pounds per acre, or 200,000 total pounds of forage. So the total amount of forage on the ranch, if Molly cut it down and piled it up, would be 1 million 325,000 pounds. These are, calculations are almost always in dry weight, so this is um, pounds of dry weight of forage. Okay, but there's a lot of reasons that Molly can't use all of that forage on her ranch. Um, think about some reasons why, even though if you knew how much total biomass you had on the ranch, why you wouldn't want to use it all for grazing animals. Well, here's four good reasons that I think you want to stop and think about how much forage you want to leave on the ranch um, to sustain from year to year. First of all, not all of the forage can be eaten by animals. Some of it is simply not forage. Some of that biomass could be wood or cactus or poisonous plants, things that would not be forage for animals. So you don't want to use it as part of your forage calculation. Secondly, you've got to leave some vegetation behind for soil health. Soil is a living organism uh, entity that has organic matter in it for microbes and for holding water in the soil, so you have to leave some vegetation around to, for, to hold the top of the soil and to keep the soil healthy. Um, third, there are a lot of other animals in the ecosystems besides livestock. There's insects, there's many uh, kinds of wildlife from large um, ungulates like deer and elk to rodents and other smaller animals. So you need to leave some forage behind for them. Finally, the plants themselves need photosynthetic material to survive disturbances. That's how they get their um, usable carbon and survive from day to day. So you need to leave some leaves behind for the plants. So having said that, how much forage is usable on Molly's ranch? Scientists would recommend in the southern mixed plains that Molly could use 40 to 50 percent of her forage and she could do that every year and the land would still be maintained in good condition. So Molly um, has decided to be a bit conservative and she's going to use 40% of the total forage on her ranch as usable forage. 
So remember, there was 1,350,000 pounds of total forage. How much is usable forage? Okay, by my calculations, 1,325,000 pounds of forage times 0.4, well, that would give you 40% of something, equals 530,000 pounds of usable forage. So that's the amount of dry forage that Molly can use to set her stocking rate. Normally at this point we would stop and make some changes to accessibility. We'd make sure that the forage was accessible to livestock on the ranch. Some of the parts of the ranch may be too far from water. This depends largely on the species of animal. For example, sheep can travel further from water than cows or horses. Younger animals can travel further from water and still forage effectively. Animals in good condition can travel further from water and also animals with experience on the ranch and experience in traveling can also um, travel further. So the how far an animal can travel for water, from water really depends on the animal. It also depends on the season of year. In the spring when vegetation is green and the temperature is low, animals can travel way further from water than they can in the hot season in the summer when they have high demand for water and the temperature outside is hot. Um, also terrain. In level country animals can travel further from water than in, in steep terrain. So it depends on the animal, the, the time of year, and the terrain. Um, but generally, we would always think of the land within about a mile of water as being accessible to even cattle. Vegetation um, can also be inaccessible if it's um, growing on terrain that's too steep. And again, this depends on the animal, the age, the condition, and the experience. There are some animals that are really experienced and really able to use rough country. Um, and there's others that just aren't, depending on their species, breed, and experience. In the example with Molly Texan, this is a thousand acre ranch, so it's a fairly small ranch, and the whole area is accessible to animals. So we're not going to make any changes to the amount of forage available. So now we're going to calculate the forage demand, how much the animals need. Molly has several species on her ranch that she wants to maintain. She has four horses that weigh about 1,200 pounds. She also wants to allow enough forage for 15 pronghorn that she sees regularly on the ranch. And then um, the rest of the forage she wants to use for sheep that are going to weigh about 180 pounds. So there's three steps to this. We've got to figure out how much the, the horses use, how much the pronghorns eat, and then we'll have to figure out the demand per sheep per year. Okay, let's start by looking at the uh, demand for horses. The forage demand, each horse weighs about 1,200 pounds. Horses are non-ruminants, they're hindgut fermenters, so they eat about 3% of their body weight per day. That means each horse eats about 36 pounds per day. They're on there all year, so they eat uh, every day, 365 days a year, and that's a total of 13,140 pounds per horse per year. Remember, we have four horses, so if you take that amount times four horses, you get 52,560 pounds. Let's take a look at those pronghorn and see how much they eat in a year. Each pronghorn weighs about 110 pounds. They're ruminants, so they eat 2.5% of their body weight. It means that each pronghorn eats 2.75 pounds per day times 365 days in a year. It means that each pronghorn eats just a little bit more than 1,003 pounds. 1,003.75 pounds. So you take that 1,003.75 pounds times 15 pronghorns that Molly sees on her ranch commonly, and you get a demand of 15,056 pounds per prong, per, for all of the pronghorns on Molly's ranch each year. Now we have to decide how much each sheep needs in a year. The sheep weigh 180 pounds. They're ruminants, so they eat 2.5% of their body weight per day. So they eat 4.5 pounds per day, and there's 365 days in a year, so the total demand per sheep is 1,642.5 pounds. So that's total demand per sheep per year. So if we know uh, how much is left over after the horses and the pronghorn get done eating, we can figure out how many sheep we can put on the, on the ranch. Total amount of forage on the ranch is uh, 530,000 pounds. The amount needed per horse is 52, I mean, for all the horses is 52,560. So if you take 500 and, 
thousand pounds minus fifty two thousand five hundred sixty you get four hundred and seventy seven thousand four hundred forty pounds leftover forage after the horses now let's the, remove that the, the amount from pronghorn if you take that amount minus the fifteen thousand and fifty six pounds needed for the fifteen pronghorn you have a remaining amount of four hundred and sixty two thousand three hundred eighty four pounds that's how much is usable per for all the sheep. Remember that sheep use about uh, each sheep needs 1,642.5 pounds per year. So the math is pretty simple. You got a total of 462,384 pounds. Each sheep needs 1,642.5 pounds. So that means that you can have eight, 282 sheep on the ranch. So that's what we would recommend to Molly, that she could buy 282 sheep. The question then is what does that calculate? What is that, that stocking rate? Remember that stocking rates have to have three components. They have to have a number of animals or animal units. They have to have an area of land and we need to know how long they graze. So in this example we had 282 sheep on a thousand acres for a year. So what is the stocking rate in AUMs per acre? Most often we have stocking rates related in AUMs per acre or acre per AUM. So what is the calculation that would give you AUMs per acre? 282 sheep per 1,000 acres per year. Um, we first have to calculate how many animal units we have. Each There's five sheep per animal unit, so if you took 282 divided by five, you get 56.4 animal units. There's 12 months in a year, so we have to multiply AUMs times 12, I'm sorry, animal units times 12 to get AUMs. If we got 56.4 animal units times 12, that gives us 677, actually uh, fractions of that, but I'm going to round it up to 677 animal unit months. If we have 677 AUMs per 1,000 acres, we divide 677 by 1,000 and we get 0.677 AUMs per acre, or convert that in acres per AUM and you get 1,000 acres divided by 677 and you get 1.48 acres per AUM. So the stocking rate on this ranch then would be most easily quoted as 1.48 acres per AUM. Um, what if Molly decides she's tired of raising sheep and she wants to raise some stalker steers? Now stalker animals are ones that are growing, usually steers or heifers that are growing and then at the end of the grazing season we usually sell them. So who knows what Molly has in mind. Maybe she wants to go to the Caribbean for the winter. But she's going to change from using sheep to using stalker steers. Suppose that she buys steers at 600 pounds on April 1st and then she sells them on June 30th when they weigh about 800 pounds. We need to know how much the sheep, the, how much the steers will eat per day and how much they'll eat during that whole period so that we can give a recommendation to Molly on how many steers she should buy. We know that over that period of time each steer is going to average 700 pounds. They start out at 600, they end up at 800, so over the grazing season they're going to average 700. They're ruminants, so they eat 2.5% of their body weight per day. So each day they're going to eat 17.5 pounds. Um, we have the steers for three months from April 1st to June 30th. So each day they eat 17.5 pounds times 90 days. means that during the growing season we can estimate that each steer will eat 1,575 pounds. So how many steers does Molly need to go out and buy uh, to accommodate this new grazing plan? We know that Molly has 462,384 pounds of usable forage. That's the amount that she has after she's accounted for her horses and for the pronghorn that she wants to make sure have forage on the ranch. If we know that each steer eats 1,575 pounds, you divide the amount available minus the amount the each steer uh, requires and you come up with 294 steers that Molly should go out and buy. So that's the general process of using this four-step procedure for balancing forage demand and forage supply. 
and it's just a pencil on uh, calculation. It's a ballpark figure, but it's a good place to start.